Hello and Ashe people. Today I'm going to do what is going to be called a what you hold the third. And I have some stories to go with that, so if you want to read them then go on. If you don't, well you can just pass to the items, but this is going to be something that I consider to be a big hole. This is for me a big hole. And this time I stroke gold now. As you know, and as I said before, I live in Israel, and in Israel it's very uncommon to actually find a witchcraft shop. Most of the time you have like traditional medicine sh shops in like, you know, ancient places where people don't trust modern medicine, and then you can get some stuff like resins and mure and frankincense and stuff like that, and you know, the rest you have to either go and then identify nature or basically, you know, order online, like, I, I, I don't have a Hydro on the Conquer route available in Israel, so I buy this online. But this time I struck gold. And I wanted to show you some of those things that I've struck gold, and I want to tell you how I struck gold. And this was like, this is an intellectual gold, because this is something I needed to research in order to get there. So I'll tell you the story of how I found witchcraft serviceable shops in Israel. And it went like this. And when I'm talking witchcraft, of course, I'm not talking about Wicca, I'm not talking about Hoodoo, I'm talking about, you know, basically a shop where I could get some resin to make some incense, okay, or that, you know, basic, really, back to basic, and that's fine, I don't need to have my mix, instance mixed for me, I really like to make everything from scratch. So, in the beginning, I read this book, Traditional Healing uh, Things of Israel, by Zohar Amar and Ephraim Lev. And this book is basically a guide that, that has like all those Arab shops that carry all those, you know, with their spices, they also carry all sorts of stuff. And I visited two of those shops. But those shops, as time moved, stopped being all those medicinal, magical stuff, like abra seeds and stuff that is used in African witchcraft. And, you know, I, I was fighting to find a chunk of manure. And I had this, and a very good friend of mine, uh, went with me all over Israel and it became very difficult to find mule and we started paying 45 shekels to f 50 grams of mule, which is insane, okay? So I said, okay, this was very sad and, you know, I started ordering things online and I thought this was like the end of, of herbal magic shops in Israel. And I was very much depressed and, you know, People here are different from the USA. They are not as serviceable as, as, as people would. It's like, you know, it's difficult to talk with them and get what you need. Uh, but this was, you know, this, I was in a very long time, like half depressed from the fact that I can't even get here in an ancient medicine store here anymore. And then one day there was, we, we have this thing that is called Shavua Sefer, the week of the book, but in, you know, it's called like this, but it's basically a month. And, and I went to a large week of the book in, in Tel Aviv, and I saw this book. Ethiopia in Israel. Medicine and, and cures from uh, the tradition of Ethiopian people. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, and I saw herbs, and I said, well, I know those herbs, and what do I need that? And I didn't have that, and I was so stupid, because right now I'm practicing African witchcraft. And like it or not, Ethiopians are part of Africa. And, you know, the fact that I'm going the other edge, like in Congo or, you know, in, in doesn't mean that they don't have trade routes. So, you know, I went back and bought this only to discover that not only they have muir, and this is a common thing to buy in those shops, they also have like sandalwood. Now, I used to order my sandalwood from India, so if I needed sandalwood, either red or, 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 or white, I had to order it and wait and wait and wait and get a really small amount for a lot of money because of shipping and because of taxes or other stuff. But they have every instance ingredient I could dream of. 
Now, sadly, we don't have an Ethiopian uh, community in Tiberias, so I had to go to Tiberias' closest city that had, like, according to this book, free Ethiopian shops, and that city is Afula. And I never really thought of finding anything in Afula because Afula is a modern place, and all those medicine shops I used to, that were basically our medicine shops, are, are you know, in, in like old places like Akko or, you know, uh, Jerusalem. So, you know, I went to the Ethiopian shops and, and lo and behold, that's full of magical ingredients just for me to grab. Now, let me show you some of the stuff I bought. First of all, a whole lot of Ethiopian mirror. It's the true stuff, guys, okay? And I know Ethiopian meal because I order it online from religious stores, and this is it. Slightly peppery, and look at how much is this, okay? I will tell you how much all my shopping cost, okay? Because I never really got to ask, you know, specific every item how much it cost. But this cost uh, eight shekels. A shekel being, okay, a shekel being uh, approximately one fourth or one fifth of a dollar okay so basically this was like a few dollars worth of mirror and you know it's as i said before it's, it's very useful for love spell for emotional spells all the canaanites uh, practitioners that i know swear by it for purification they don't use sage they use that and it has like feminine and yet slightly peppery smell that I adore and this is based of many many instances okay so the mirror is important so I got some mirror from there and I, I'm putting it close you see those are chunks of white and red sandalwood and as you see it's mixed with uh, other herbs this mixture is called Berbera or Barbera or Berbera or whatever I really can't pronounce those names very well. And this tea is usually burned next to when they when the, when the Ethiopians have coffee ritual. Yes, they have a coffee ritual. So in the middle there is a censer, and in that censer they would like have like incense burning while they're serving you like highly spiced tea. Now a uh, coffee. Now I don't drink coffee. But then, when I entered that shop, I saw sensors. And, and okay, some people collect incense, I collect sensors. And as I told you in the previous video about Hecate, I like sensors that look like sensors. And so, I saw amazingly beautiful, biblical like. You, you know, if you go to like biblical museum, you see sensors in the forms. You see the answers of this sensor. And I'm going to show you what I bought and how much it cost. You will laugh, but it's beautiful. Look at this. It's huge, isn't it? The little free sticks I, I placed in, in the holes because I'm going to burn some incense. Look at this. It has room for stick incenses. You can burn a uh, Chuckles in there very easy. I have a big hand. People, I have a big hand, and this is huge, and it's made out of clay, and it's hand painted. You can see it's hand painted, okay? And it's beautiful. Look at this. Isn't that like the perfect ritual sensor? Isn't that the perfect thing? And I'm going to burn stuff in here for Shango, okay? Because it doesn't like uh, metal all that much, okay? So I got this, and this cost me. A bit more than ten dollars okay it cost me like I don't know eleven twelve dollars look at this beautiful two handles I'm amazed at the beauty of this and as I as, 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 I, as I showed you can burn free incense sticks in this look look I love it it's beautiful and I use it all the time and you know, another thing I bought there is this. This is teff flower, red teff, if I'm not mistaken. And teff is superfood. It's a superfood, and it's used to make injera, Ethiopian bread, which is like slightly sour, and it's really good for you. It's like really good for you. It's like full of 
vitamins and iron and even you know proteins and it has much less carbs than normal bread and it's really really delicious so I'm going to attempt making some uh, injera out of this and what you do is usually you make like a large injera it's flat bread and it has like very spongy and very moist texture and you make several cooked dishes and salads and you put it on it and then you tear some of the bread and you eat it with your hands and I think this is a simple beautiful thing I like finger food very very much okay so after I bought all of this the seller of that shop gave me some incense as a gift okay if you know that instance, tell me about it. Really, I would like a video response if you know this instance because I never burned it before. Okay? And it smells really nice. It smells soapy. But as Amber, uh, Amber Honeymoon would say, it, it's, it's a bit, a bit cat pee incense. A bit, tiny bit. So, I don't know. I don't know if I will like it or not, but I think I will. So anyway, while I was going there, so, so, okay, so I got the turf, I showed you everything I bought in that show, but I have some other stuff. One of the things that while I went there, I know I didn't buy this, but there was a beautiful, beautiful lavender bush there. And it was huge! And I, I saw people like walking around this. How can you walk around this without picking a few leaves and smelling it? And I said, well, nobody will be missing a few twigs, so I picked it up. And I put them in my bag, and when I got home, I made a smudge stick, and now it's going to dry, and I will have a perfect smudge stick, you know, because I think that lavender as a smudge stick is much better than sage. Okay? Now, other things that I have bought. Uh, first of all, I wanted to show you this. I put this here so I wouldn't forget. Yes, you're not mistaken, those are free chicken legs. I serve Eshu, and I serve Eshu a lot, and I, as a magician and a practitioner, every time I'm doing a walking, I need to go and give Eshu his offering, Eshu his offering. So every time I'm making Papa Legba's offering, his basic offering contains free chicken legs. And I'm going to the butcher, and I'm requesting that, he, that I'm telling him, I'm going to buy chicken legs for, let's say, $50. I want you to do, put me every three chicken legs in a bag. And then when I need to give an offering, I just take a bag out and defrost it before I make the offering and give it to him. And why am I showing you this? I think it's important to talk about not just, you know, how to make the perfect oil. I think it's important about to show consumerism that has something to do with religious and liturgic magic. And so I'm showing you one of my little third tricks to give Papa Leg by his thing. Okay, this is this is how I do this and I'm very happy about this. And the, one of the other things I wanted to show you, and I, 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 I missed that since the last time I it it actually belonged to the last hole, but I didn't show it to you and I felt really bummed about this. Okay, this is an actual broom made out of broom straws okay broom like the plant you can see it closely and it doesn't have a handle uh, but it's holdable and it's useful i can like use it for magic and for cleansing and stuff and i really like it it's really beautiful and this cost me like two dollars it was nothing it's really and it's handmade so i love it very much Okay, the two other things I wanted to show you before I say goodbye. Okay, I take care of my skin very seriously. I have medical problems specifically that I'm using this for, but also, you know, just because I like my skin to stay young and beautiful for a very long time. So this is a, I don't know if you can see it, she placenta element. It's a cream that has both hydrolyzed pearl and she placenta. And placenta is the best thing for your face. So if you don't know this, if your grandma didn't tell you placenta is the best thing for your face, and if your Chinese grandmother didn't tell you that crushed pills are the best thing for your face, this is the optimum of maintenance. Really, it's the best. It's thick, but it's not heavy, and it gets into your creases, and it fills them, and it's really, really good. I, I can't recommend this enough. Another thing that I've gotten and I like very much, okay, okay, I ordered a bunch of books from Amazon, 
and it was my birthday gift for myself. I got like 14 books and the first one has arrived, this book. Now, you might ask yourself, with hoodoo and voodoo and other stuff, why do I need this book? Well, I don't. I have traditional recipes that work just fine. But at some point in time, Cunningham, Scott Cunningham, became the ultimate reference uh, book and nobody ever filled that blank after he died. And not only is he showing only very one-sided aspect of the craft, for instance, he doesn't talk about domination or hexing spells, his recipes are not that good. Okay, they are okay. I, I, I would make them like in a pinch. For instance, I have the Hecate ritual and I told you I confessed I couldn't have the Hecate oil because I didn't have the time to saturate herbs and everything and you know, it's not that good and I really waited and waited and waited for other recipe books to get out there and they never did. Cunningham became canonized and, and it's not that good. So, you know, I wanted other neo-pagan uh, herbal books and, and recipe books so I wouldn't have to Cunningham everything all the time. So I'll get like inspiration from other sources and really I, I think that I will make a video about how to select magical books next time. So, okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye, Nashe, and peace be with you.